Namaste. Namaste, Bhagavan. Namaste. Namaste. So nice to see you again. We are very happy, Bhagavan. Thank you for taking time with us. We are today. We are 44 people in the room. And and uh, again, we appreciate your time, so we will do all the translations later. May I start with the first question? Yes, yes, go ahead. <laughs> Dear Bhagavan, again and again you have pointed out the importance of setting right the relationship with parents for strengthening the bond with the Divine. When parents have passed away or when there is no way to meet them, you, have to you had told in earlier Skypes that we would have to say sorry for all the incidents where we had hurt them and express our gratitude for all the good things they did to us. And you have said, what we say to them has to be done with feeling from the bottom of our heart. Regarding this, we have the question, what to do when I can't do it with a real feeling? when it is only my head who says those words like sorry and gratitude because I know that it is that important. Thank you. Yes. You have to stay in the truth that you do not have feelings, that you do not have emotions, that you are not able to connect to your parents. That is the truth. So you would not say, try to generate those feelings or emotions. That is untrue. So stay in the truth Except it say yes, I am not able to do it. That should work up to 50 percent. The remaining 50 percent, among the one, have to work and, uh, and set it right. Because if you have a poor relationship with your uh, mom or dad, then because we have to work for your awakening and, and to solve some of your problems, we find it difficult because uh, you would not relate to us also because you're not relating to them. And we need to have some kind of relationship for us to really work on them. And uh, that's where the problem is. But if you stay in the truth that that's all there is to it, we'll somehow have use more force and knock you down. In which case, I think we'll have to knock you down. Get prepared for getting knocked down. Thank you for this answer, Bhagavan. The second question is, since our last Skype with you one month ago, many of us can feel how much stronger their blessings have become and some of us notice that there is growing uh, kind like success as very fast and good results um, are following after sometimes just one diksha. Thereby some of us see how haftiness and ego is inflating. Is it enough to see that and to be aware of it, or what do you recommend to us? Yes, it is enough if you can see that you are becoming haughty, egoistic, and you are craving for significance. If you have the awareness, it is enough. But then, it will help you up to a point. But when it comes to awakening, no matter what you do, it is going to be a problem. You must see so powerfully that you cease to be egoistic, cease to be craving for significance, and cease to be haughty if you want to be awakened. And awakening is happening very rapidly now. It's almost happening in every country now. And uh, by every day, we are getting more and more awakened people. It's moving very fast. And uh, I hope that soon, Switzerland too will have its own awakened people. That, you know, to start more very very fast. <laughs> so, I hope many of you or almost all of you could become awakened soon because you seem to be such free people, you seem to be liberated. I do not know from what you are liberated, but you seem to be liberated and quite free. <laughs> <laughs> so I expect that uh, most of you should uh, become awakened quite soon. Thank you for this beautiful answer, Bhagavan. Our third question is, how much do you value the way we nourish ourselves on our spiritual path? For example, meat, alcohol, chocolate, 
which is important in Switzerland, <laughs> tobacco, etc. And how does avoiding those treats fit into the concept of being authentically um, if we are still enjoying it in a moderate way? <laughs> I cannot judge you and I can never stop loving you. So what I would be doing is I'd be working harder. So let us say if you are smoking and uh, tobacco and uh, the beef shot don't get along very well. Raw tobacco is fine, but not processed tobacco. It produces a different kind of energy. It sort of counteracts uh, the beef shot. It becomes a problem. So also alcohol and meat beyond the point, they become problematic. So if in moderation, well, I think we should be able to handle it. But whatever it is, uh, uh, we are so focused on awakening you. Come what may, uh, we will not uh, let go of you. But uh, if you are too stubborn, because you are enjoying it to be authentic, no problem, in moderation. I said, we have used the hammer. That is with excess power, in which case you will be knocked down. And I hope you don't mind being knocked down, because you want to be awakened. On the other hand, if you cooperate, it will make our job much easier and you too have a smoother process. Because I'm, I'm sure all of you are serious about getting awakened and uh, to the rate of the mind, which has been uh, making use of your life for its survival. As I look at you, all that I could see is this mind is nothing but a donkey. It's being carried by you on your shoulders, a strong donkey. It is not letting go of you. Nor are you letting go of the donkey and its massive head is resting on your head. And it's a huge baggage also on its back. The baggage is uh, the answers you have gathered uh, through your life, through reading several books and other things. And because uh, you are inside the mind, you are living inside the mind, you have questions like what is the purpose of life and is there a God or not? The answer is no. How do you come into being? The answer is yes. Who made the God? and the God is there, why is such a mess, endless questions and endless answers. Now if somebody was drinking apple juice, he would not ask you how does it taste like, because you're drinking it. Since you do not live life, you have all these questions. And once you become awakened, you come out of the mind, and what is there is only pure consciousness, which is uh, witnessing it, and you start living. Anything and everything is just joyous. Just drinking water, or going for a walk, or looking at your wife, or child, or work. Everything, nothing but joy because you're experiencing for the first time. You started experiencing life. Right now, you have not experienced anything except when you are a child. And in some rare moments, you've experienced it. But the mind does not allow you to experience anything. The moment anything is seen, heard, smell, contact, any of the senses, are being in any, any input, the mind quickly names it. Once it is named it, the commentary starts, non-stop commentary goes on. You call it a tree, yes, you need to call it a tree. Tree and then this is an apple tree or a mango tree or a coconut tree and all the kinds of comments. Then the, the experience is immediately destroyed. So you're not experiencing that. That's why you're taking alcohol, you're taking your chocolate, you're eating all these things because you're not experiencing life. And it's terrible. But I would say you're very intelligent eating a little uh, meat, having some nice chocolates and some drinks and some of them in the show. So I would not be so cruel as to tell you, give up all this. I would only say, just try to manage it within proportion so that I could help the donkey to calm down. How long are you going to carry this donkey? Miserable is in existence and the saddest thing is you do not even know you are miserable. You do not even know you are suffering. The jail is so comfortable. The jail of the money. So we would like to bring, and I'm sure you want to bring down the donkey. And once you come down, there's no question. There is only pure consciousness. There's nobody there to ask questions because he's gone. And the question is gone, the questions too are gone. If the questions gone, the answers too are gone. All the garbage which you've been gathering over the years, reading so many books, you know, no way. No use. This is not the real thing. The only concept and beliefs. All that is dumped, you are free of that, free of the donkey, and start riding the donkey. Let's say you are in Switzerland and you come to India, then of course we will see you carry a huge donkey on your head and the donkey carries baggage. And in India, you bring the donkey down, 
and you throw the bag it out and you fight back the internet on the dog. So things are moving very, very fast now. I don't think I will wait until 2012 or 2011. Maybe by the end of this year, most of you could be awakened. So every day I am meeting people, Awakened, Brazilians, Americans, Chinese, Japanese, Chinese, all kinds of people. The matter is getting awakened very, very fast. So, Swiss people should also be awakened very, very Thank, thank you for this clarification, Bhagavan. The last question is, dear Bhagavan, <laughs> you have often said uh, that we are able to become a better human being through Diksha, uh, no matter whether we are a Christ, a Muslim, a Buddhist, etc. Some do not feel any bond to and don't have a relationship with any religion, but they can immediately feel the divine revelation when they see the nature, a tree, a flower, a mountain, the starry sky, etc. Uh, how can they develop any personal bond? <laughs> yeah, obviously they cannot develop a personal bond, uh, since they are not in... Did you mention divine there? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you mention the divine? Yeah, yes. Okay. So, I don't know what the uh, divine is, it could be nature, a tree or a cloud in the universe. It's between you and uh, uh, the divine. If the divine is a tree, then you respond to the tree, that's all. May the tree give you awakening. And if uh, your divine is the universe, you can talk to your divine. And if you are the divine, it is awakening. That's all, it's between you and the divine. If you are a Christian, you may have bond with Christ. If you are a Muslim, with Allah, And if you are a Hindu or a Buddhist, accordingly. But since you say you only respond to nature and the divine, may the divine, may nature give you the awakening. <laughs> what kind of personal bond you want to have with the nature or with the, or with the divine? With you and the divine. I'll be a bystander watching the show. <laughs> oh, Thank you, sir. Oh, excuse me. May nature give you the awakening. <laughs> Thank you so much, dear Bhagavan. <laughs>